Hi there. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how to configure route based VPN. This time, the only difference is that we're going to use the Cisco ASAs with the tunnel interfaces. We are not going to use policy based VPN. This is relatively a newer technology in Cisco ASAs, um, starting from version 9.7. You have the capability to create tunnel interfaces. Um, obviously, there are advantages to route-based VPN. You can participate the interfaces and the networks behind them into routing. You can run BGP on those tunnel interfaces. I think that's very cool. And uh, more importantly, I think the killer feature is that you don't have to haggle with NAT. Uh, NAT is completely out of the game. Additionally, uh, this is one more benefit. It's easier to set up when you have multiple vendors in your topology. So for instance, on this side, I have Cisco SA. On the other, I have Checkpoint, Palo Alto, Fortinet. It's easier to set it up. With policy-based VPN, you have to be very careful that uh, the policy matched on both ends. Cisco SA is very, very picky about that access list, the interesting traffic. Okay, now we want to talk about our topology. So I have two sites that I want to connect them together. On the left hand side, we have site A and on the right hand side, we have site B. Both sides are connected to the internet via two Cisco ASAs as the gateway. On the left hand side, I got 192.168.1.0/24, which represents network A, site A. And on the right hand side, I got 192.168.2.0/24 representing network B. I got one server, 1.10, which is located on site A. This is going to be a resource that we will access from this site, site B. And 2.10 is a client that is connected to this network. Obviously, it can go to the internet. Etc. Etc. But this is the green part that we want to establish. This is the tunnel, the site-side VPN that we want to establish. And in this case, it's going to be a route-based solution. Okay, so here's what we're going to do first. We want to have the objects. So I'm going to create the objects on the firewall, even though it's not mandatory. I prefer to stay organized. So I'm going to log into both sites, site A and site B, Cisco ASA. Show an object. Apparently, I've already created them before, so I'm not going to touch them. Inside represents the internal network, and remote is the remote network that I have on site B. Same thing in here. Let me make sure that I have the objects created very well. So I have that. Second, I have to create the Ike phase one policy. In our example, I'm going to stick to Ike version one. And my I phase one, I think I still have it in the system. Sure, I'm crypto Ike version one policy. Ike version one. So I have this policy, I don't need to touch it. Sure, I'm crypto version one. And I think I have a matching policy on both sides. Very good. So I already created the Ike phase one policy. Now I have to create the IPsec transform set. So let me see, sure on crypto IPsec. I do not have a transform set. All right, so I'm gonna create one. So crypto IPsec trans Ike version one transform set. I'm going to name it TS1 and ESP AES 128 ESP SHA HMAC. This is on site B. I will create the same site A. So this is going to be our IPsec transform set. The next step would be to create the IPsec profile. I have some residue from the previous configuration. This is my profile. So I already have that. I already have the container, but there is nothing in it. 
so let me show you how do we create it so this profile is created by executing this command and then here you give it a name for sake of consistency and not getting lost in the process I always stick to the site names but feel free to pick up whatever name you're comfortable with in our example I'm gonna say site B so this is my profile that I'm creating on firewall A but it's gonna be related to site B in here from the commands I have this option to set the transform set I'm gonna say set Ike version 1 transform set and the name of the transform set going to be specified here um, I can do the security association uh, lifetime seconds one hour and I think that's pretty much all I need I can set PFS but it's not mandatory so I'm gonna skip that show run crypto ipsec this is gonna be my ipsec profile so i will have to create the same thing on site b show run crypto ipsec i already have the container like i said you know how to create one so i'm just gonna enter and say i version one transform set is gonna be ts1 and the lifetime security association lifetime seconds gonna be 3600 seconds and sure and crypto ipsec so we verified we have the ipsec profile next we have to create the tunnel groups this is pretty much similar to policy based vpn so we have to create a tunnel group for that sure and tunnel group we have none so i'm going to create one so in this case i'm going to pick the interface on hold on let me see what firewall am i in site b so i'm going to specify this one's ip address as the name of the tunnel group so here i'm going to say 203 205 206.2 and then um, type going to be ipsec lan to lan and ipsec attributes i'm going to say ike version one pre-shared key is cisco how about that let me make sure the ip address is correct 203 205 206.2 okay correct now I have the tunnel group created. I'm gonna create the tunnel group in site A. So I'm gonna say IP address of this guy, 180, 204, 206. 204, 206.2. Uh, it's gonna be type IPsec lan to lan. Still have problem with this naming. Why it's lan to lan, why it's not S to S. Tell me, Cisco, why? Then IPsec attributes, like version one, pre shared key, Cisco. So we have our tunnel group ready. Next step, we have to create the tunnel interface. If you watch the video on policy based VPN, you know that we had crypto maps. So crypto maps were kind of binding things together. This responsibility now goes to the tunnel interfaces. So I will create a tunnel interface. The number can be anything, anything between zero to 100. Um, in this case, I'm gonna say 10. And in here, I have to specify a few things. The IP address first. So I'm gonna say IP address, this is pretty much like GRE, if you configure GRE on a Cisco router, the, the syntax, the look and feel is pretty much the same, not 100% same, but it's pretty close. So I'm gonna say 10.10.10.1.255.255.252, .10 .10 .10 it's gonna be point to point. Name if, I'm gonna say site B, oh yeah, 
side B. It's, it's the gate to side B, so I'm going to say side B. And um, it's already not shut down. Then I'm going to say tunnel source interface is going to be the outside interface and the tunnel destination IP address. Copy and paste feels good. That and tunnel protection is going to be IPsec, IP IPsec profile. You have to provide the name of the profile. I already forgot what was the name of the profile. Crypto IPsec. That's the profile name. <clears throat> so in here, I gave the profile name. Then tunnel protection mode or tunnel mode. Yeah, tunnel mode is going to be IPsec, IPv4. There's no support for IPv6, at least on this version. And show run interface tunnel 10. We look complete, so we have to do the same on the other firewall. So I'm going to say interface tunnel can be 100, doesn't have to be the same. And then IP address, now I have to pick the IP address from the same subnet, 252. Then name if, I can name it whatever I want. And here I'm gonna stick to naming convention site A. And then IP address I already gave it. Mm, already not shut down. Then the tunnel source, the interface outside tunnel destination the IP address of the peer tunnel protection IPsec profile oh God. the name of the profile and tunnel mode is going to be IPsec IPv4 and we look better Okay, not complete, but we look okay. So, after that, I have to enable Ike version 1 on the outside interface. So, I'm going to say crypto, crypto Ike version 1, enable outside. I have to do it on both firewalls. Then, the last step would be to configure the routing. Show sure, run route. Let me see what do I have in here. So I have few choices in here when it comes to routing. I can configure BGP or I can configure static route. So in here I'm going to configure static route. So I'm going to say if I want to reach to from site A. So from site A. If I want to reach to 192.168.2.1 and syntax inconsistency, I have to go to this guy. So I add this, this site static route now i need a return route have to go to this guy paste it in there and because i like copy and paste i'm just gonna reverse it all right so we've configured everything now it's time for us to test our topology and see whether we have reachability between the two sites. So now I'm gonna go to the client. And in here, we can fig, yeah, I am 2.10, which is this guy right here, one of these clients. 
and I'm trying to get to this server on site A. Ping 22168.1.10. Oh, very fast. And let me also test it from the other client. Now, something I want to tell you. Let's let's go to this <clears throat> firewall on site B, the one that is facing the client that we have. We just tested things with it. If you want to verify things, you can run this command: show crypto Ike version one SA. When you see that there is a security association in here, it means that your connection is active. At least phase one is there. And if you want to check phase two, you do this, show run crypto, uh, show crypto IPsec SA. Here is the part that you have to pay attention to. Sometimes when you have problem, when you're well, for whatever reason you have a mismatch or your configuration isn't applied correctly, you will see your encapsulations and your encryption uh, counters are incrementing, but you're not a, you're not receiving the response and decap and decrypt basically doesn't increment. That's an indicator that there is a problem somewhere. It doesn't tell you what exactly is the problem, but it, it's a good indication that you have some misconfiguration over there, either your side or the other side. All right, so now let's go to the client, to the Linux box. I guess that's the one. Um, PA. I am 192.168.1.10. Gonna try to ping 192.168.2.10. And sure enough, I'm able to reach to the client. So pretty much we are done. If you're wondering how else can you expand on that, if you want to, let's say, add it on a network into the topology, let's say suddenly you have another department that needs to reach the server you have to basically just add the static route into it. So let's say department 3, 192.168.3.1 will be added here. It's just another SVI. And then the traffic will be routed because this firewall has a route. But then on the other side, you need a route back. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to worry about so many details like the ACLs and, and you know updating both ends and stuff like that. No, no, no. It's pretty simple. And additionally, uh, you can also configure BGP and you can redistribute this route in here on this side. For instance, you're learning about these networks and you can redistribute it to downstream routers or uh, neighbor devices in your topology. Okay, so that is pretty much all. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up uh, and also consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber. And don't forget to click on that notification button so every time I post a new video, you get a notification about it.